Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. And we're getting ready to worship. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship? Is there order in the house? Is there glory in the house? Is there honor in the house? Hallelujah. We're expecting from the Lord today and we're believing God today and we came to pour everything out today. So let us pour out today. Amen. Wherever you are, make yourself ready to praise the Lord today. We welcome everyone near and far, those of you in your homes and those of you in the congregation. We thank you for being a part of service today and we're going to bless the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Let us worship together. It's time for worship. Amen. It's time for worship. Is it time for worship? Amen. Is that what we came to do this morning? We have an independence day in the spirit. Is that what you came to do this morning? Amen. Let us worship. Come on. God bless you. Hallelujah. We come to give God glory this morning. We come to bless his holy name. We come to magnify him for he is great and greatly to his be praised. And we celebrate his goodness and we celebrate his grace. We celebrate his goodness. We celebrate his grace. But we know his grace wins. Can someone shout, grace wins? Grace wins. Grace wins every time. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are grateful for your grace. We are grateful for your grace, God. Your grace that saves us. Your grace that keeps us, we are grateful. Oh God, and we are living proof, oh God, that your grace wins every time. There's a war between guilt and grace, and they're fighting for a sacred space, but I'm living proof. Grace wins every time. Rising up in victory, singing hallelujah, hallelujah. Grace wins, grace wins every time. There's a war between, there's a war between guilt and grace. They're fighting for a sacred space, but we're living through that grace wins.
this morning to his amazing grace. For his loving kindness. For his keeping power. What is your response this morning? God, we lift our hands and say thank you. your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for being God. We stand with a grateful heart this morning.
Sing that all together. You have rescued my life. Yeah. You have rescued my life. And I'm never, and I'm never going back. Just the voices. You have rescued my life. 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 And I'm never. And I'm How it used to be, cause you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. And I'm never going back. My response is. My, 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 my. I want to get excited for God because God has been so good. 
Thank you. Thank you. That even when the world get mad at me, they still didn't kill me. Because I have a word for somebody. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. I want to remind you. And the same token, I've given God thanks. If you will turn the Bible with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we'll read from the 10th verse. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you have been so good. Thank you. Because I know where I'm coming from. I know where God has brought me from. Oh, Lord Jesus. There is a saying goes like, who feels it knows it. And anybody that sees it can talk about it. Hallelujah. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells, that's already dig, oh Lord Jesus, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive tree, which thou planted not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, O oh God, verse 12, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Eternal God and Father, let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path right now, Lord. Help us, God, that I will speak the word that you would have me to speak today. Let self be slain, O oh God, and let your word go forth under the power of the anointing in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Moses, preparing and ready to lead the children out of bondage. On their journey... There was a word, and the word says, lest thou forget. Lest thou forget. What are the things that we forget? Uh, when I look at the dictionary, and I try to define beware, It is to be one's guard. One must be on guard because danger ahead. The word is used to warn someone or to be very careful about something or someone. About something. Are someone. I want to use a theme. Beware of forgetfulness. Beware of forgetfulness. Forgetfulness is a consistent inability to remember things. Sometimes we use the term we have temporary amnesia. Oh, Lord Jesus.
But God warned the children of Israel. Beware lest thou forget. We must remember where God has brought us from and where we could have been. Don't forget where God has brought you from. God tell Moses to prepare the people. He remind them. He said to the children of Israel, when they're about to go into their future land, it's called the promised land in the land of Canaan, preparing for the future. He said, beware, lest thou forget. There is a future, and they will face, and it is imperative for them to be mindful of how they live their lives. It is imperative that every believer remember where God has brought them from. It is imperative that we must remember the blessings that God had put upon us. Beware lest thou forget. There comes a time. We are now in the future time. Where we look at Israel was going from a life of bondage to a life of prosperity. I remember as we walk and as we talk. I remember as we travel back and forth from different islands and different country. We came to America, the land of the plenty. There was a time when we used faith to receive. We use faith for healing. We use faith just about for everything. Because the thing that we cannot see, we got to use faith for God to deliver. Beware, lest thou forget. From everywhere and every part of the world, there's somebody that came to America. In the land of plenty. In the land where science, don't get me wrong, science is the ideal. But when science shows up without God, we're going to have a problem. We have a hedge of technology. And technology now is replacing God. Replacing the power and the essence of God. Beware, lest thou forget what God has brought us from. When we never used to have microwave, we never used to have refrigerator, but we find a way to preserve our food. Lord Jesus of mercy, help me. We have a way to trust God. Listen, God gave them a command and he warned them. I'm going to bring you into a land of plenty. But beware how you use the plenty. Beware how you handle the plenty. Be careful how you walk in the land of plenty. Lest you forget that it was the hand of God who take you across the Red Sea. It was the hand of God who take you across your problem. It was the hand of God who heals you when you're sick. It was the hand of God who provide water. Beware, lest thou forget the blessing that God has bestowed upon us. During their time in ancient Israel, olives, water, that was a great commodity. 
No, Jesus of mercy. Even though you are going to a place of plenty, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you forget God. You cannot forget God. You must remember that it's God who put you into the land of plenty. Lord God, beware, lest thou forget what God has done for me. Beware of forgetfulness. There are times when we get into our comfort zone. Because when you have plenty, you become comfortable. Lord Jesus, have mercy. There's a time when TV wasn't plenty. There's a time when cell phone wasn't even talked about yet. But we find a way to communicate. I'm saying that these things are great and wonderful. If there wasn't for these things, the world would be behind. But because it's God who gave man the wisdom, God gave man the knowledge, God gave man the brain to make all these things. But now when we enjoy the knowledge of God, we don't want to see God no more. We put God in a box. Thank you, evangelist. I tell you the truth, Bishop, sometimes when we even supposed to be praying, we are listening to another preacher. Are you, hello? Sometimes when we supposed to be in the presence of God, I'm not saying don't listen to preacher. But you must know God for yourself. Read the book. The book of the law that God says because I am honestly telling you this. Many of the words that are in social media, I'm not saying the word is not good, but the intent of the word, the intent of the word, and the carrier of the word. Oh, good God of mercy. Instead, we should be seeking God. Because even sometimes when we listen to the preachers, the word goes through one ear and comes through the other. If you have read it for yourself, you would understand. It will never leave you. The word will never forsake you. The word will brought you back to life. Beware lest thou forget what the Lord has done for you. We got into our comfort zone and everything becomes a bother. Simple things becomes a mountain of headache. Church of God, this is not, I'm not imposing all time something upon you. I am trying to intrigue you to a memory where God has brought you from. I'm trying to remind you that there is a God even in the plenteous time. Be grateful for little things and God will brought you forth into big things. Beware, lest thou forget God has helped us. We have a beautiful home. Bishop, home is so comfortable you don't want to leave it to come to church. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking about me. There comes a time in my life when I get so comfortable, when I get into a zone deacon, that if I don't be careful, I don't even pray. It is the fact of life. It happens to many of us. I don't know if it happens to you. But there's a time in my life when I want to give up. But when I remember, oh God have mercy, where God has brought me from. I remember the days when I have no 
nothing to him. And God provides. Woo! Listen, if you don't trust God, you ain't going to get anything. As much as what man can give you, God can give you more. Lord Jesus, I remember. I remember the days where God brought me from. The days when I almost gone crazy. I don't have food. I don't have clothes. I hardly have a shelter over my head. But God provide. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Bishop, God provide a way that this little boy, now looking so tall, dark, and handsome, I wasn't like this. I remember what God do for me or what he did for me. He brought me into the land of plenty. Listen, he's the only who feels it knows it. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Woo! Let the redeem of the Lord say so. If it hadn't been for God who's on my side, then where should I be? I remember the days. Bishop, there was once in my lifetime I almost go crazy. My parents, they could not, they did not work. They were up in age. And I was going to school. And uh, my parents couldn't afford it. I enlisted in college. But because I said to my father, I have to go to college, my cousin said uh, to my father, he called him Baba. He said, Baba, let me tell you something. Your son have, an ab have the ability more than who is sitting there in college right now. Even if he reached third farm and stopped there, he still have a good education. My father said, son, I don't know because I don't want to start and stop. Then I said, good God, what is this? All right, I enlist myself into another school. I don't talk to my father because I am not blaming them. They just couldn't afford it. And I talked to one of my brother. My brother said, okay, I'm going to send you to school. Lord Jesus. I'm telling you about the plan of God. He said, all right, I sent it to school. Rev, I spent nine months in high school. And I dropped out. Why? Tragedy. My brother met into a car accident and he was killed. Woo, Lord Jesus. But God did not leave me there. I still go down on my knees. If I don't have education, I still have a life. I have a life in Jesus. I never give up. I never turn around. But I continue to worship. I continue to go to church. Listen. Lord Jesus. Woo! Beloved brethren. When I came to this country, I came because of the love of God. I was among the church believers who saw a young man with potential. Woo! They go in and they search and they find a way to get me into America and here I am. It was the love of God. When I came to America, I was in Connecticut and I went to church over there. I'm just giving you a little about my life story. Oh God, and when I want to leave and come to live with my brother, they said to me, do you have a church up there? I says, no. Do you know of any church that I can go to in New York? They said, no, we have not affiliated with a church in New York. But there was a brother. Oh, Lord Jesus. There is a brother. 
by the name of Terry Lee. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> My God, I heard of him from Connecticut. They said he's like fire. And he brought me, when I came up to Connecticut, I communicate with him. Lord Jesus. And he sent me to Seven Sutter Avenue. Lord God of mercy. When I came to Seven Sutter Avenue, God surrounded me with some people, some good art people, some loving people, some genuine people. I'm saying what God, Pastor Lindsay, he sent me among people who can hold my hands up. Lord Jesus, some genuine people that will tell you the truth. And they said, listen, you got to carry yourself better than this. Bishop, I met some people, Seven Sutter Avenue. It's not, they not only tell you, but they're going to help you. They're going to show you. They're going to give you. I am thanking God. When I landed at Seven Sutter Avenue, beware, let's don't forget what God has done for you. I will talk because God had placed me at Seven Sutter Avenue where people watch over my back, where people pray for me, people guide me. How can I forget? Where should I get temporary amnesia for? Because it's a blessing from God. Bishop, I met some people. Not some people, but some brethren. When I came to Sutter, they guide me. They talk with me. They lead me in some path. Jesus have mercy. But God, I'm saying that God is a provider. And how can we forget what God has done? How can I forget the blessing? I don't know. But I remember some things. Very little things. That when this restroom wasn't like this. And the podium was in the corner over there. I will never forget. I'm not. I want to speak the good, Bishop. I want to speak the good because God is good. Even though this building is not where you want to sit yet. Let me say that something you are in glory. Woo! Just to hear where this church is coming from. Beware, lest thou forget. We coming from the lobby. Many of you coming from Howard Avenue. You know the church more than I do. There is a God somewhere. Moses warned the people. But now Moses is dead. Joshua has to carry on. Without your help, Joshua alone is going to go across the water. How can I forget the things that God has done for me? How can I forget what the God has done for me? I remember how he brought me out of bondage. Your bondage may not be the children of Israel's bondage. Your desert may not be the children of Israel's desert. But you have been through something. And it's only the mighty hand of God that brought you through. Yeah. Only God that brought you through. Now is not the time to forget. 
There's little things that cause us to forget some time. The writer said, some time misgiving darkens the way. And faith light I cannot see. But when I ask God, dear Lord, to brighten the way, he brings sweet peace to me. He will bring sweet peace to you. Only if you forget not the blessings of God. You cannot forget. And sometimes these things cause you to forget who God is. Have you ever got into a real situation that you want to take situation into your own hands? Maybe it's just me alone. But there is some situation. Boy, I want to rail. I want to jump. And it's not for the good. I want to knock down. It's not for the good. But because of the grace of God. I remember what God has done for me, evangelist. So I cannot and I will not do the things that God says beware. Lest thou forget. Sometimes I am down. Sometimes I am discouraged. Sometimes I have heartaches. But the things that kept me Deacon Brown is the things of God. Is what God done for me. Is what God want me to do. So I can't give up now. I have come too far to turn back now. Simple things. I tell you how we're closing. I tell you of a story. In the, in the book of Ma Matthew and chapter 16, Jesus was teaching the children. And while he was teaching, he was healing. And he was providing for those that are hungry. He healed the sick and he caused the leper to become whole. He caused the blind to see. And he caused the cripple to walk again. In the middle of his preaching and teaching, here comes the Pharisees and Sadducees. They're asking for signs and wonders. When Jesus stepped away from them, he said to his disciples, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Here they had a misunderstanding because, can I just say that their vocabulary, vocabulary was a little bit shallow. So they in turn, because they used to leaven, they thought that Jesus was talking about bread. All because they did not bring any bread. But Jesus said, why are you so worried? Be of little faith. I am not talking about the bread that you forget to bring. I'm talking about the teaching of the Sadducees and the Pharisees. It becomes a leaven in the life of many people. It is negative. It is hypocrisy. And then Jesus said to them, listen, I am not talking about that. Now sometimes Jesus himself even had to remind us who he is. Further down in the verse, Jesus said to them, do you remember what I did for you before we cross over the regions of Caesarea. Beyond the sea, didn't you remember what I just did? I feed 5,000 with a few loaves of bread. I feed 4,000 with seven loaves of bread. How now you come to say that you're worried about bread while I am here with you? Sometimes we got to be reminded who God is. Sometimes it takes tragedy to remember, not tragedy, but tragedy. Excuse my language. Tragedy occurs in our life that's when we remember who God is. When we get into a comfort zone, we don't remember that God is a provider. We think is a man 
that bakes the bread. The man that bakes the bread is not a provider. He's only a baker. God is a provider. He's just a businessman. But God provides for his people. And then after that, the story goes on. And he said to the disciples, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? Huh? Who do men say that I am? Jesus did not have to ask a question. Because he already know. But he wants to put his people on the alert and remember who he is. And there we get a great confession. Lord Jesus have mercy. Before the confession, the man, the disciple says, oh, some say that you are Elias. You are some of the prophet. You are John the Baptist, whatever. But Jesus said plainly, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Here is, here is something that the brethren and believers, we are to know. You got to know Jesus for yourself. It's an individual thing because if you don't know God, there is no testimony. A living testimony is what you use to declare who God is. It's not what Peter, James, and John said. It's your contact with God. If God never heal you, you can't say God is a healer. If God never provide for you, evangelist, you can't say God is a provider because you'll be lying. And the world will catch up with you. You have to have a contact with God. You and I have to have a relationship with God that when we say God is, our words come with power. Our words come with an effect. So Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Woo! Beware lest thou forget who God is. What God has done. He is your provider. He is your healer. In spite of that we have the doctors. We're not going to put the doctors down. We're not going to put the nurses down. Because God make them grave. God make life easier for us. That he set people among us. Who can determine our problem. And they can also fix our problem. God gave man wisdom how to take care of the human body. So there comes in the picture under the power of God. How can we forget what God has done for us? How can we forget what God has done for us? Who God is, sometimes we get caught up that we forget who God is. Our comfort zone has taken us apart. And that we don't know anymore who God is. But I here to remind ourselves that lest we forget what God has done. Lest we forget what Jesus has done in our life. Then may God have mercy upon us. Encourage yourself. Don't forget who God is. Don't forget the blessing. Don't forget to give thanks for the blessing that God bestowed upon you. <laughs> Bishop, the writer says, when you're belly full, can I say it like that? <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, when, okay, let me say it good. When your stomach full, <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. When your stomach gets full, then you get relaxed. And hear me, the Bible, when the Bible speaks of when your belly full, he's not speaking of just what you eat. It's when you are not filled to capacity. You have a house. You have a car. You have a job. You have everything flowing for you. 
Are you listening to me? When you have all these things and everything flowing down the stream of life, then we tend to forget it was God who placed us. It was God who gave us. It was God who blessed us. It was God who healed us. It was God who wake us up this morning. It is God. So when you're filled with everything to a capacity, Solomon said, I give myself into everything that is possible. I go and I enjoy myself. Oh, God. But he said, remember that there's a price to pay for everything. Beware lest thou forget what God has done for us. Beware lest thou forget the blessing and to give thanks unto God, who is our creator and maker. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Everyone in the house, would you just stand to your feet and begin to thank the Lord for all that he has done. Tragedies are commonplace, all kinds of diseases. People are slipping away, economies down, people can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I will say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Someone say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Many are the blessings that you've gave unto us. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love to me. Come on, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. How dare we not be thankful? How dare we not thank him this afternoon? After all that he's done for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for making ways in the desert. Thank you for making ways when we couldn't find a way. Thank you, Lord, for making ways for us. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing the impossible over and over and over again. Thank you for all the miracles. Thank you for the food that we eat. Thank you for the clothes that we have. Thank you for the shoes on our feet. We thank you, Jesus, that we have a roof over our head. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Any grateful people in the house this afternoon? Anybody grateful this afternoon? Anyone can look over their life and think about all the things that God has done. All the things that have led to us even standing here at this point. All that God has done for us. Anybody thankful? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Don't know where food is coming from, but you never miss a meal. Don't know where rent is coming from, but God somehow makes a way. Don't know where the finances are coming from, but God keeps making a way. Always faithfully making a way. Would you lift your hands and praise Him? God is good. God is good. God is good. David said, I will sing of the goodness of the Lord forever and ever. What shall we render unto the Lord for all his benefits unto us? All his benefits. It's given time in the house. I want you to get in your wallets, get in your pocketbooks, get in your purses. Amen. And we're going to give in the house this afternoon. Amen. We're going to give in the house this afternoon. Get your offerings together. Amen. I want to remind you, amen, amen, that you are giving. Giving is more for you than it is for God. Uh-oh. Giving is more for you than it is for God. He made the land. He made the sea. The Bible says, uh, my father is rich in houses and land. A thousand cattle. A thousand cattle upon the hill belongs to him. He's not lacking in any resources. But he institutes giving for a purpose, and that is to unlock the blessings in our life. 
It is to unlock gratefulness in our life. It is to unlock in our life. And when we sow seed in the land, it is because God wants to increase our life. But if there is no seed, there can be no tree. Hello? If there is no seed, there can be no tree. And inside every seed is the potential for a tree. And if the tree brings forth fruit, that means that there is more seed and more seed. So one seed in one moment can be the moment, the seed that brings the fruitfulness in your life. Hello, somebody. So as you give today, I don't want you to just think seed. I want you to think tree. Now, now if there is no seed, there is no tree. If there is no tree, there is no forest. You don't like how I'm talking. If there is no seed, there is no tree. And if there is no tree, there is no forest. If you want the forest, you first got to have the seed. So this afternoon, we are going to sow in the house. Amen. Expecting 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. I wish someone would talk. Do you expect anything this afternoon? All the expecting people in the house that don't need to be pumped to be given, but you know the goodness of the Lord, you know the power of the Lord, you know the faithfulness of God, that when you give, you're expecting. If you're expecting, I don't believe in pumping for offering. I don't believe in it. There must be something in you that understands the goodness of God. Some revelation. So I want you to give out of your revelation whatever God has revealed to you, whether it's a billion, whether it's a million, whether it's a thousand. I'm going to ask you to sow in the house this afternoon. Come on, get your offerings together. Offerings together. And stand with me. Stand with me with your offering. Is there a seed in the house? Is there a seed in the house? Are there trees in the house? Is there a forest in the house? Uh, someone said, yes. I'm a forest. Hallelujah. I'm a forest giver. Hallelujah. 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 As I move towards a triumphant life, take your seed in your hand. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to run and get my seed because I want this blessing. As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. As I move towards a triumphant life. I accept all supernatural concepts and ideas that God has to lead me to my destiny. Now, we're not talking just about our ideas, but God ideas. Right? God ideas makes ways where there seems to be no way. Makes streams in the desert. Those kind of ideas. God ideas. So, when I get these God ideas, right, he's going to make a way, some way, some way he's going to, anyone believe he's going to make a way. So I sow triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I live triumphantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for these gifts. Thank you for these offerings. Lord, we're giving in faith. We're giving in expectation. But we're not giving to be blessed. We're giving because we are blessed. Lord, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for this moment, this opportunity to give in your house. What an opportunity, God. We're thankful, Lord, for the doors you are opening even now. Lord, and we will reap bountifully. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give in the house.
one more time all my life, all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. Come on, everybody open your mouth and sing all my life. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing. I will sing. Can we do that one more time, one more time? All my life. And all, all my, my life. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made. I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. Hallelujah. All my life, you have been so, so time everybody in the house all my life hallelujah he's been so good Hallelujah. Let's lift your hands and praise him in the house. Hallelujah. All our life. We look back over and over and over again. So many times, so many ways you've made. You've been faithful, God. 
You've been so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So grateful, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your goodness and mercy running after me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We're grateful. We're grateful to the Lord. Amen. I want to thank everyone that joined us in service today. We thank you for being a part of an awesome worship service, and we're asking that you be with us next week. Amen. We're expecting even more from the Lord next week. Did you get a word today? Did you get a word today? Amen. Did you get an, an enjoyment in worshiping the Lord today? Amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Amen. And we want to thank everyone that was a part of service today. And I want to remind you to do one thing, and that is? Say it again. One more time. Be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant, be bold. Be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Ah, 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 ah. Be triumphant.